الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد عباد الله فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة all praise due to Allah and his praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family, his companions and his followers until the day of judgment and all the prophets and the messengers and their followers we bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his final and last messenger my dear brothers and sisters, if we look at the most common words that we use every day in our daily life, if you will ask any non-Muslim even about what is the words that usually they hear from Muslims, usually the top three in most of the statistics is mentioning these three words. Ash-shahadatayn, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. It is the most common word that Muslims always use and refer to themselves or connect it to them. And they keep repeating it. The second one will be, Bismillah. It's a very common word that we use it in every day. And the third word will be, Assalamu alaikum. Even now, a Muslim, when they come to address Muslim in masjids and convention, assalamu alaikum. The first thing that you hear, that they copy that. My talk today about the third one, the word assalamu alaikum. This greeting, which we use it so often, it's one of the most common word that we use in our day, uh, every day and every night. And I have noticed that so many of us have not yet come to learn much about the nature of this greeting. What this greeting really means. What the meaning, the message behind it. Something Al-Islam order you to say it every time that you meet somebody. And you enter uh, to meet your, house, your family in the house after you finish your salat. And I will come to mention when you should say, Assalamu alaikum. But it's something you're repeating it every day, so many times. It must be a message behind this greeting. It must be a lesson that Allah and His Messenger ﷺ want the Muslim Ummah to learn from this greeting. Assalamu alaikum became like a sign for Muslims. Shi'aru ahlul Islam wa ditharu ahlul Iman. It is something so common to hear from every mu'min a Muslim, male or female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to this greeting by saying, تَحِيَّةً مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً This greeting that you use, assalamu alaikum, it is from Allah. And listen carefully. He said, this greeting you've been giving to, you've been giving you from Allah, mubarakah, a blessed greeting. Blessings, it means a lot of good in it. So let's explore in this khutbah, what is so blessings about this greeting? What is so special about this word, assalamu alaikum? Because unfortunately we found 
that a lot of Muslims in recent days start replacing this greeting with other greetings uh, uh, other than Assalamu Alaikum, which is will never ever uh, 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 give any meanings close to the meanings that or the, the meanings that we learn from the word Assalamu Alaikum. Why do we say that? Assalamu Alaikum. When you say to somebody Assalamu Alaikum, when I start my speech before the one the brother called the Adhan, I said Assalamu Alaikum. I greeted you. Why do we do that? Why do we say that? What's the meaning of this? First, when you say Assalamu Alaikum, Assalam is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's name. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah huwa salam. Allah, one of his names is As-Salam. So when I say As-Salamu Alaikum, يعني I'm saying Allah's names be upon you. Or I greet you with Allah's name. So Allah's names be upon you. As-Salamu Alaikum. And look carefully to the word Alaikum. It's not to you, it is upon you. Mub as-salamu lakum, as-salamu alaykum. Because in Arabic language, it's as well as in English, when you say ala, it means for all of you, cover you all. It will cover all your body. And it will basically go to every single part of your body. What that means when I said Allah's names should be upon you as a person. What that means? What the word as-salam means? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a name, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete. Free from anything evil, free from anything harmful, free, free from anything would be considered less than being perfect. Because as-salimu min kulli naqs. The one who is free from any disaffect, the one who is free from anything negative. So when I say, Allah's names be upon you, that means that since Allah is the complete, I ask Him to also complete you, and to make you perfect, and to make you free and protected from whatever could be considered negative or evil. So I ask Allah to make you, under the protection of His name, which is As-Salam. So you will be protected by his name, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since Allah is the perfect, he is the one who can make other perfect. Since As-Salam means the one who has been protected from any negative, protecting from any kind of disaffect, he also will protect you because of this name from whatever can be considered negative or bad. Not only that. Also, when you say, As-salamu alaykum, you're making dua. It's not only greeting, it is you asking Allah, you praying to the Lord of the whole of the world by saying, Oh Allah, I ask you to make him salim. I ask you to make him protected from whatever can harm him or her. So when you say, As-salamu alaykum, I ask Allah to protect you from whatever can harm you in this dunya and in the hereafter. So when you say, As-salamu alaykum, it means, Oh Allah, I ask you to protect such person from whatever can harm him or her in the dunya and in the hereafter. Can you think of how many things can harm you in this dunya? Can you think of how many things can harm you in your grave? Or in the hereafter. And I'm asking Allah every time I meet you. That Allah protect you from these things. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make sure that you will be perfect. So you will not be ever uh, be affected by any kind of diseases. So you, can be, you will be sick. Because as salim. The one who will be healthy. In a good conditions. And this is the prayer that I Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you every time I see you. It's been said in the old days. Salamullah ya matarun. Alayha wa laysa alayka ya mataru salamu. He's far away from his wife. So he, it was raining. So he said, uh, yeah, he looked at the rain. And he said this very famous poet, which is a line. He said, oh rain, 
carry as much as drops that the, the, talking to the cloud, as much as water in this cloud and drop of rains in this cloud, I ask salam to my beloved wife who far away from me because this cloud will travel. He said, I want her to be protected from anything can harm her as much as the number of the drops of rain in this cloud. And I don't intend to make dua for the rain or for the cloud. I intend that this dua will be carried by cloud to my wife. So as-salam, it's a form of dua that you'd say. That's why when you go to the graveyard, you don't greet the dead. Because they don't reply to you. But when you say, Salamu alaykum ahl al-diyar, you are, you're praying for them to be protected. You're praying for them to be in a good shape. You're praying for them. So whatever is harming or bothering them, or any kind of punishment that they are, or suffering that they are in in their grave, this dua, you're asking Allah to protect them from it. It's not to greed them. Also, when you say, Assalamu alaykum, the ulama said, Hada aqdu aman. If a person who is in a status of war between you and him, let's say there is two armies, and one of the enemy came and as said, Assalamu alaikum, or you told him, Assalamu alaikum, you have given you, him, your word that he will be protected from you. And you cannot betray him, you cannot kill him, you cannot abuse him, you cannot do anything to harm him. It's like a contract, even the word. That's why he became under your dhimma, under your protections. Every time I meet you, and I said, Assalamu alaikum, I made a promise that I will not harm you. I made a promise that you will not see anything from me except what is good. I will not treat you. I will not talk to you. I will not deal you, deal with you with any kind of evilness. You will not see from me anything but what is good. No plotting, no jealous, no envy, no betraying, nothing like that. What you're going to see is a salam, is peace, is purity. What you're going to see is a very clear clarity in my intention towards you. The Arab in the old days, they used to say, whenever somebody approached them, they said, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَرِّ كُلِّ قَادِمٍ It was a common practice that always, and I see until today, some brothers, I, I see them doing that. Every time the phone ring or somebody comes, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ شَاءَ good. Scared from any stranger coming. Islam replaced that fear by giving a positive attitude to the society. Then when you approach, Assalamu alaikum. And you always expecting good. You should not expect it bad from anybody when you meet that person. That's why we said, Assalamu alaikum. We don't say in Assalam, Alaik Assalam. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as reported by Abi Dawood and at Tirmidhi, من حديث أبي جري الجهمي الجهمي الجهيمي actually that he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when I met him first time I said عليك السلام يا رسول الله then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said don't say عليك السلام say السلام عليكم أو السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا رسول الله that's what Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه used to say Assalam, Amanullahi fil ard. Assalam, it is a, a, a security that Allah subhanahu, it is basically declaring that the person that you are meet is in secure position that you will not harm him. It is basically giving your word to the other person that he will be safe, he will be secure. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Muslim man saliman muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. The, the real Muslim is the people, will be, the Muslims will be safe from his hand or his tongue, that he will not harm them with anything. As-salam, as I said, means purity, means clarity, means that you telling that person, you said, As-salamu alaykum, you're telling him, my heart is clean, my heart is pure. My intention is pure. And as if you telling him that everything, no matter what happened between us in the past, it's already erased just by saying, Assalamu alaikum. 
One of the early Muslim generations used to say, sometimes I will have something in my heart against my brother. The moment he would say to me, Assalamu alaikum, it will erase everything in my heart. Because I know now this is, means that our relationship has to be based in clarity, have to be based in purity, based on purity. My brothers and sisters, all these meanings come together. I attach Allah's names to you. So Allah, the barakah, the blessings of this name, as-salam, will be upon you. I make dua for you. I make that contra- I make that declaration the moment I see you by saying, you will not, should not expect anything from me but peace and good. And also I'm telling you, my heart is free from anything evil against you. What that, what these meanings means to us as society, as a community. One, whenever you say as-salam, as-salamu alaykum, remember that you mention Allah's name. And that should make you respect this greeting. You should not just say it without realizing the status of it. That's Allah's name that you mention. It's not just any name. Also, uh, it means that there is no doubt great lessons and meanings behind this greeting. And before even I go farther, I would like to extend my talk to include the word Rahmatullah. Because we say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Imagine not only Assalam, now you're saying wa Rahmatullah. Allah's mercy, one of the best quality that He has. He said that my mercy have taken over my anger dominate most of the other actually most of the other uh, quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so when you say assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah yani i ask that Allah's mercy will be upon you what that means when Allah's mercy to be upon you that you will live in good and you will die in good and you will be resurrected in good and you will enter Jannah, which is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Irhamu man fil ard, irhamkum man fil sama'. Be merciful with those on earth, so the one who in heavens will be merciful with you, reported by Imam Muslim rahimahullah. That also teach us that you're telling that person, you expect nothing but peace, you expect nothing but mercy from me. Mercy indicate the quality of mercy, the rahmah, it indicate that you are gentle, that you are gentle, rafiq, that you are forgiver, merciful people are forgiver. Also mercy, it means that you are kind. That's why Allah's mercy was referred to in the Quran as Jannah, because this is out of kindness. That he reward you. Al-Matar, the rain, referring the Quran as Allah's mercy because it's out of his kindness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mercy, it means also safe. You cannot be merciful if people don't safe around you. Merciful people are people that you can feel safe around them. Also, it means compassion. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, إن هذه الرحمة التي خلقها الله في قلوب الأمهات that the mercy that Allah created in the heart of the mothers toward their children. He called it mercy, that love, compassion that you have in your heart, it is a mercy. So when you greet somebody with that, you asking for him to be loved by Allah, to be rewarded by Allah, that Allah will be kind to him, that Allah will treat him with kindness and forgiveness and gentleness and the same from me. Not only that, you say, wa barakatuh. Barakat, the single of barakat is baraka, which is originally comes in Arabic language from the word birka. Birka, it means pool, where all the rain gather in one place in the desert and basically became a place where there's a lot of water in it. What do you expect when a lot of water gather in one place in the desert? What would you expect this place looks like? Full of life, full of green, people will move and live around it. Al-Barakah, it means a lot of good 
gathered in one place. Then not only that, al-barakah means, and the lot of good come out of the same place. So two things. When you say barakah, it means a lot of good comes together in one spot, and a lot of good comes out of that spot. So when they say, Allah's barakah in you, يعني, a lot of good will come on you, and a lot of good will comes out of you. As a person. Which is totally changing the attitude, the characteristic of the person. When you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Not only that, al-barakah, it means something will remain. Al-ulama said, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, this greeting indicates three things. That you're asking for this person, that a lot of good happened to him when you say, Rahmatullah, Allah's mercy upon you, يعني, whatever you think, kindness, goodness, reward, gentleness from Allah will come to you. Then not only that, then you say as-salam before that, which is to be protected from anything evil or can prevent you from taking advantage of this mercy. Is that all? No. You're also asking Allah that, that were, this situation will remain in this status. It will never change. In order for you to enjoy anything in life the most, you make sure that you have access to it, to have it. And you make sure there is nothing else will appear to prevent you from enjoying it. You know what? I love certain food. But if I got diabetes, I cannot eat this food. I will not benefit from it even if I have it. Okay, I'm not diabetic. I have it. I eat it. It's finished. Tomorrow I don't have it. I'm not enjoying it anymore. Here, no. You will have what you like. And nothing will prevent you from having it. And it will remain with you all the time. I'm asking Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To bless you with so much good. And make sure there is nothing will prevent you from enjoying this good. And I ask him to keep this good with you all the time. I don't do this one time. I do this all the time when I see you. I say this for you every time I meet you. And every time I depart from you. Barakah. Blessings. A lot of good in and out. Barakah in your body. So you will be healthy. Barakah in your body. So when you are healthy body. You will use this body to do something good. Barakah in your knowledge. So you will be able to learn the beneficial knowledge. Barakah in your knowledge. So you will be able to deliver the beneficial knowledge to others. In and out. Barakah in your wealth. So you will have access to so many halal resources. Then barakah in your wealth. That you will be able to use it to help so many others. Barakah in your family. So Allah blessed you with a blessings family. With good wife. Good children. Then they will be good to others. And prevent and bring another generations. Which is will be very blessed as well. Barakah in your time. So you learn and you use it in what is beneficial. Then you will have the ability to also exercise and basically give back so much barakah in your whole entire life. Can you compare this with I, Bonjour, Bonsoir, What's up? Can you compare this to this? Tahiyya. That's why Allah described it as barakah in this greeting. Because there is so much in it. You've been ordered to say this when you finish your salat. It's a message that you send to the people in the left and the right. That as a person, as a musalli, as a one who just finished his prayer, you should not expect anything from me, but all these good meanings. To the society. That the Salat have prepared me to be a person who spread peace and gentleness and mercy and barakah in the society. You say it when you meet your friends and you depart from your friend. Even when I leave you, don't expect anything from me to harm you in your absence. When I see you, don't expect anything from me but what is good for you. When you enter your house, 
ask yourself, when I say to my family, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, do you really, your wife, your husband, your kids, expect assalama, security, safety, to be free from anything will harm? Or they would say, oh, he came. And everybody terrified. And everybody worry that maybe something will come out of your mouth. Or some move or physical abuse will happen. Do really your family, when you go to your family, do you reapply the meaning of rahma, mercy, inside our houses, with our spouses, with our children, with our per- parents? Do we really see ourselves blessings and barakah in our homes? Do we bring a lot of good and we receive a lot of good in our homes? If just every couple look at this greeting and take it as a guideline in their homes, in their societies, I think our society will not be the same. It's been ordained for us to say it when you enter the masjid. So when you deal with the community, this is the guidelines. Even when you give lectures, when you give a speech, this ummah should reflect upon such messages that we send every day. This every one of us should not just say these greeting every day now or every time you say it. You should think about the great meanings that that this greeting carry. One of the lessons to learn from this greeting as a society and a community that we all should always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always Allah's names to be mentioned so often. Even in our greeting we remember and mention his name. Also for a society and community we need to know that it's very important for society to live in peace, in, secure, in a secure society. Security is a very important element for any community to be successful. To be successful. That's why peace and security and mercy are the sign for this ummah, shi'aru hadhi al-ummah. In Nabi Sallallahu said, Afshu salama baynakum. Spread salam among yourselves. That's one of the first words that he said, as Abdullah ibn Salam said, I heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu The first thing I heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu when he entered Medina. To establish the society in Medina based on these great meanings. Also, this is means to us as a Muslim ummah that even our greeting but chosen by Allah was not chosen by somebody, individuals. Something from Allah, tahiyyatan min indillah, greeting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. Not only that, this greeting connect us as a Muslim ummah to the akhirah. The Muslim live in this worldly life and his heart attached to the akhirah. Every time you say, Assalamu alaikum, I want you to know that this is the greeting that you will hear when you enter the gates of paradise. Tahiyyatuhum fiha salam. Angels greeting them with a salam. Allah Himself will greet you with this when you enter Jannah. And He would say, Assalamu alaikum ya ibadi. As He said, Salamun qawlan min Rabbi rahim Salamun alaikum tibtum fadkhuluha khalidin. A salam for us as a ummah. It means it teach us as society. That we love good for others. Every time you see somebody say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This is not the, this is against the greed, the jealous, the hate toward others. That's not how Muslim function. That's not how the society build. It teach me to love good for others. I'm happy when you are good. I'm happy when there is a lot of good happening to you. This greeting also very clear. To forbid us from by cutting one another, turning our back to one another. This greeting is to, it's actually we've been encouraged to start our brothers and sisters with a salam. So whenever you see somebody, and Nabi Sallallahu said, if there's two people have uh, a problem with each other, they don't talk to each other, the best among them, the one who start with a salam. وَأَفْضَلُهُمَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ بِالسَّلَامِ this greeting teach us to leave harshness and being mean or rigid. This is not what this greeting will lead to. 
this greeting will lead us to be gentle, merciful, kind, nice, soft with each others. I think I learned from this. It's very important that we contemplate on things what we're getting in for granted. Something we do it every day. But unfortunately, we're not starting thinking about it. What kind of message that Islam want to send through this? We just take it for granted. As a culture, we don't even reflect upon it. And this is very important for us as a community, as a society, as individual, to go back and to check all these words that we commonly use, what kind of messages that they implies. Also, when we teach our children from now on, Assalamu alaikum, when your little boy start or the girl start teaching the Assalamu alaikum, make sure that you teach them not only how to say it, but they learn what it means. But they will learn what it means. My dear brothers and sisters, any community based on these fundamentals, mercy, safety, security, clarity, pure hearts, love for one another, no doubt it will be an, a, model, a role model for other communities as well. It will be strong. It will be successful. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. It's a greeting been ordained for us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or legislated for us to greet humans not to greet animals don't be surprised I have seen people greet animals and not to greet jinn not to greet angels like some people enter an empty house and say salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah why you say salamu alaikum I'm greeting the angels. I'm greeting the jinn, the Muslim jinn in the house. So this is actually have no basis in Islam to enter an empty house and to say Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum is a greeting been ordained for you to greet the living Muslim brothers and sisters that you have them around you. Not to greet angels, not to greet jinn, not to greet animals or anything like that. There is no harm in Islam to add other greetings after Assalamu Alaikum, such as hi, welcome, good morning, bonsoir, whatever you want to say after that. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi have greeted people other than after Assalamu Alaikum. He said, for example, Sahih al Bukhari, he said, Marhaban. He said, Marhaba, welcome. Also, if somebody greeted you with Assalamu Alaikum, you have to reply to him with similar to what he said. That became wajib, obligatory in you. But it's recommended to do more. So if he said or she said, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, you say, Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Said, Assalamu Alaikum, you say, Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah. Somebody said, Wa Barakatuh, if you want to add. What if somebody said, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh? You reply by saying, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There is a narration also said that you can say, Wa maghfiratuh. Only in replying, but you cannot say it in greeting. You cannot say to somebody when you greet him, As salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa maghfiratuh. No, you cannot add the word maghfiratuh. Only you can add it in reply. So you will always have something extra to reply with. Uh, there is another hadith, also the Prophet ﷺ told us, when you say, Assalamu alaikum, you take 10 rewards. Wa rahmatullah, 20. Wa barakatuh, 30. In one narration said, and if you add wa maghfiratuh in the reply, you take 40, but it's a weak narration. It's a weak narration. It's a weak narration. What about giving salam or replying to non-Muslims who greet you? Any Muslim greet you with, with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you greet him with the same by saying, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. He said, wa rah wa, and you say, can say, wa barakatuh. Because if Allah give him, put his mercy and his salam and his barakah on him, he will guide him. And there is no proof that a person, that a person cannot basically reply with, some, with, with saying that. Actually, Al Quran said, 
وَإِذَا حُيِّيْتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ If any one greed you, very general terms, and you cannot specify this only to Muslim unless you have a proof. As for the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ uh, said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ وَعَلَيْكُمْ in Sahih al-Bukhari, when they, the Jewish uh, uh, basically greed him, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ because they never greed him. They were saying, أَسَّامُ عَلَيْكُمْ not salam, assalamu alaikum. They used to say it very quick, like how in America sometimes we eat some words when we talk, they eat the assalam. They said, assalamu alaikum. So they said, assalam, which is death upon you, ya Muhammad. So since he doesn't know what they're saying, he doesn't want to enter the fight. Did you say assalam or salam? Very smart. He cut this fight by saying, same to you. So if they said assalam, same to you. If they said death, same to you. Allah accept from us and will not accept from them. But if they say clearly, Assalamu alaikum, here the verse that I just mentioned early, take precedence and will be the reply, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Can you start greeting him with Assalamu alaikum? This is an issue of difference of opinions among the companions. For instance, Ibn Mas'ud used to believe that Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, also you can start a non-Muslim with it by saying Assalamu alaikum, initiate that. And they use the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith Usama bin Zayd, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam have seen a group of uh, Medina among them non-Muslim and Muslim, and he approached them by saying Assalamu alaikum to all of them. And they said that the hadith don't start Muslim with saying Assalamu alaikum, it is not a very authentic narration. But it is an, a sound narration, and that's what led Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim rahimahullah to come to a conclusion by saying, you don't start them with Assalamu Alaikum, but you can start them with other than Assalamu Alaikum. Not because discriminations, it is because you want to give your brothers and sisters who are so close to you, who share with you your belief, extra advantage and greeting than any other person who's far away from you. Also, the Prophet ﷺ teach us that as-salam, it's a form of taking permission to enter somebody's house. When you call the somebody in the phone, a lot of people think it is must when you answer the phone, you said as-salamu alaykum. And I think this is, has no basis in, in Islam. When you reply or you think it's a sunnah, when you pick up the phone, you said as-salamu alaykum, as you just receiving the phone call. It makes sense fiqh-wise, that if you the caller, you start with as-salam. But if you are the one who receiving the call, phone call, it doesn't make sense to say as-salamu alaykum. Because basically you give salam when you approach somebody, when you approach somebody. Anyway, it is a good habit if you say it, alhamdulillah, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Also one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever start talking to you before greeting you with assalamu alaikum don't answer him it has been narrated several generation people will talk to some of the early generation they will said we're not going to answer until we say assalamu alaikum to remind him and it's a good habit to remind people by saying be gentle and nice to tell them hey you forgot by the way you forgot to say assalamu alaikum also can you greet somebody with hand with not like with the sign language you say like this a lot of people say that the Prophet ﷺ forbade us to give, greet somebody in a sign language without verbally saying it. So let's say in the car, somebody outside, you say like this. If you say like this, you should say also Assalamu Alaikum, even if he doesn't hear you. We are in the khutbah, I cannot ask you a question. But uh, that reason behind this because salam alaikum you learn now it is a form of dua a dua can be in his present or in his absence in her present or her absence also you can give salam to the people even if they are praying and the sunnah to reply by moving your hand and answering them can you give salam to a brother or a sister opposite gender if it is in public place and there is nothing, uh, no bad intention, which it should be, because you talk about as-salam, free of any evil, it will be allowed and the rule apply to both. Some ulama have put restrictions on young men or young women uh, uh, if they don't greet each other just because of the fitna, but there is no proof for that as long as it is uh, in public place or uh, uh, basically, uh, in, in, in group, uh, alhamdulillah, if somebody don't feel comfortable with, 
is starting the salam is sunnah any why is starting the salam is sunnah anyway it is not allowed not to give your brother salam not to greet him because of personal problem between you and him or you and her more than three days after three days it's forbidden to buy cut him or her by not giving them salam my brothers and sisters this greetings has a lot of meanings Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah have wrote more than 300 mas'ala mas'ala benefits of the word assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I tried to sum up some of his work in this khutbah to you today and I really want us all of us after this khutbah that every time we walk in our home we greet somebody we write to somebody when we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh that we respect this word respect the meanings that this word carried may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'alna wa iyyakum min al-mutafaqqihin fi al-din al-'alamin bi sunnati nabiyyina alayhi afdal as-salati wa at-taslim allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa at-taqwa wa al-'afafa wa al-ghina ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaha la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimin allahumma anfa'na bima 'allamtana wa 'allimna ma yanfa'una اللهم إنا نسألك أن تغفر لوالدينا آبائنا وأمهاتنا أجدادنا وجداتنا وأعمامنا وأخوالنا وقرابتنا وذوي أرحامنا وأولادنا وذرياتنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم بقوتك ورحمتك فك أسار المسلمين ظلما يا ذا الجلال والإكرام في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم إنا نسألك يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تغفر لنا ذنوبنا أجمعين وأن ترحمنا وأن تعفو عنا أنت أرحم الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم لك الحمد حقا حقا ولك الحمد تعبدا ورقا عز جاهك وجل جلالك وتقدست أثم اسماءك ولا إله غيرك سبحانك ربنا إنا كنا من الظالمين لئن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكنن من الخاسرين اللهم إنا نسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تبارك في أهل هذا الجمع وأن تجعل اجتماعا اجتماعا مبرورا وأن تغفر لنا ما كان فيه من زلل وخطأ وتقصير وأن تتقبله منا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اصلح أحوالنا اصلح قلوبنا اصلح أعمالنا اصلح أحوالنا وآخرتنا ومعاذنا الذي إليه مآلنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك